Welcome back to the CCC News Podcast. I'm your host, Cole Goodwin. Joining me today is Adolfo Molinetto. He has been a resident of the Gorge for 11 years. Many of you may know him as the owner of a very successful uh, winery known as Tierra de Lobos Winery, which has been in operation for six years here in the Gorge. Um, Adolfo has many accomplishments underneath his belt, you know, from immigrating to the U.S. to um, integrating into this local rural area um, to dancing with the stars <laughs> on stage. Um, and now we're here to talk about his latest adventure, which is a trip to Mount Everest, where he will be climbing to base camp. So we really just want to dive in a little bit, find out what makes Adolfo tick. How are you able to accomplish all these amazing things? Adolfo, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. So tell me about, you know, coming here to America. What was that like? What motivated you to take such a huge leap of faith? You were just this man of doing many things. You, you see something you want and you go after it. So what gave you kind of the strength or the inspiration to, to come here to the States? You know, just like three days ago, somebody asked, we were talking about my trip and somebody asked about like, is there a country that you have to see? Because I, I guess one of my personal goals is to visit all 195 countries in the world by the wow. time I'm 70. So I've got to do about five countries per year. So I am doing five countries this year. Whoa, really? Um, <clears throat> but he'd asked about like, which country I have to see or, you know, I, I have a dream. And, and I was thinking that I, I don't necessarily want to go to any specific country necessarily. I just want to be able to see it all. Like, um, I want to be able to go to different cultures. But then it got me thinking back that the only country that I ever wanted to come was here, the U.S. I mean, maybe it was the age or whatever it was. I was 17. And literally when I when I got out of the plane, I almost wanted to do like the Pope, you know, just go down and kiss and, and kiss the, you know, the the earth, but um, the ground. Um, but it's. It was. I, I think I've always been a dreamer, and um, I, as far as I can remember, coming to this country wasn't necessarily about economics. It was more about just being part of it. And um, also, you know, I landed in in probably the best <laughs> area of the United States. You know, with the mountains is exactly that's where I wanted to go. I wanted. I'm drawn to mountains, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lone wolf, so I love to be in mountains, and, um, but I also love the sea. So those are the two things I usually get, you know. And the sea is pretty close, you know. It's, um, it's only, yeah, it's only like an hour and a half away or something. Yeah. Well, for me, it's a little farther, but yeah, yeah. it depends. Yeah. <laughs> two yeah. hours or more with traffic. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't. Um, Still, it takes a lot of courage. I mean, it's one thing to have a dream and it's another thing to act on it. So that's one thing I see a lot in my life is I know lots of people that have dreams, but it takes something special, a special kind of fire to make you actually go out and make your dream a reality. So you you have some practice with that now. You came to the U.S. and um, you came to this area. You got to see mountains and I mean, you get to live in this beautiful gorge very close to the ocean. Um, but I guess my question for you is, like, how do you, how do you turn that dream into reality? You now have that experience with your winery, for example. Is, was there something that was, like, what, what gets you over, like, the hurdle of just getting started? I think one of my worst fears in life is always... And I, you know, it's, 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 it's always there is when something comes to, when an idea shows up, I always think of, would I regret this if I don't do this when I'm dying? Mm. And, uh, 
but also I'm a, I'm a driven person and when something it kind of it, like an idea shows up and then starts evolving and and then you kind of you know get into into your daily life and then you forget about it mm. and then years pass and then you know and then you're like you know and I, I don't mean it in a bad way but then you're like most people that you know that have dreams and never act on them and and so i don't i don't want you know i i have that in very present i don't want to be like most people if i want to do something i want to i'm going to i'm going to go ahead and do it um obviously i'm i'm <laughs> i'm very um i'm a very applied person and so i i've always been very responsible for for most of my life I, i've always been adventurous but i've always also um been very responsible and some mm. and and so you know that that's a good thing and that's that's part of the reason also that i i've i i i am where i am but at the same time it's part of the motivation that I have to do more adventurous things now because I feel like, in in a, in a even though I've done a How lot, how old are you, you now? Know, I'm forty two. Oh, Oh, forty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've done, I've done, I've accomplished a lot. I, I'm not gonna say. I mean, from building a winery from ground zero, you know, with pretty much having just my regular day job and and that was sort of the income that was kind of feeding into the business you know we didn't come in with I didn't come in with a bunch of money and said you know I'm gonna open up a winery and so the winery just kind of happened by by destiny we found this place and we liked you know the idea well we liked the place and you know and then we like okay we have grapes now what do we do with grapes <laughs> So that's kind of how we started making wine. It was never meant to be. I mean, we never, you know, intended to make wine or that was never something that, you know, that I thought, oh, one day, you know, I will be a winemaker and open up a winery. So for me, it's really more about now living with intention, I think, mm. is um, I in a, in, a, in a way I feel that even though I've accomplished a lot, I feel that I've also sort of lived a life of obligation so you know and, and i think it's for for a lot of people you know it's um sometimes we get into this we have to do this we have to do that you know you have to follow this protocol um but now i i you know i'm definitely more you know especially in the i would say in the last couple of years where i'm i'm, I'm gonna do it and i'm finding the the motivation to do it because um you know, we're humans and we are very fragile in a sense, you know, I mean, we're here today. We don't know. I mean, as long as you go out that, you know, your house, you're, you're at risk of anything happening. Yeah. We're very mortal. That's and, for sure. uh, and so for me is, um, and not that that is anything I think for me is also just, you know, I, I, I have this sense, you know, from, uh, from the way that I believe in things is if I did, you know, if I made a choice to come to this world, I made a choice to come and and be accelerated, you know, and, and actually live a full life without fear. And I think fear, and that's your thing, conquering fear has been one of my, you know, goals, uh, because I think most people don't do stuff because, you know, it's, it's too risky, it's too, you know, it's too dangerous. And um, yeah. And, but I, you know, there's there's a song in Spanish that says, "I'd rather uh, live and lose than not to live at all." So obviously, when you're doing these things, you are probably going to lose. You know, you're probably something might happen to you, but you know, I, I definitely rather live than not to. <laughs> yeah, I definitely see that in you. You're very vital you have like a vibrancy to you um, I think when people really show up in their truth and they really show up you know as their authentic selves and like you said kind of in that wanting to accelerate the spirit accelerate um, your journey as a person uh, it shows I definitely got to see it on stage this year when you were dancing with the stars you talked a little bit about um, how dancing has always been one of your your dreams and that you really enjoy dancing um, and I could definitely see it when you were on stage. You were like a glow. 
And I'm pretty sure that's uh, that's why you won. <laughs> That was a very uh, cool experience. I I had a great time, and it was also humbling because I think uh, that sometimes I think we're oblivious to to the people that surround us and how much love you you know there is and. Um, I mean, I, I heard that uh, usually the one that wins is usually the one that raises the most money. So, you know, they say, like, you know, rarely the one that actually dances, you know, that actually knows how to dance is the one that, that wins. But, you know, from from just being there and, and seeing the support generally across, it didn't matter, you know, who the team was. I mean, I that that was that was really amazing. That was an amazing experience. And. I feel, you know, in that sense, I feel very blessed that this community is so, so open. You know, I, I've always, I've never felt anything other than, than welcome, you know, here. And that's why, you know, we're still here. Yeah. 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 I mean, I grew up in this community, so I'm obviously very fond of it too. And I'm really glad <laughs> to hear that um, as someone who, who moved here, that you also have that experience mm. of feeling kind of held by the community. Um, so you mentioned you're going to be traveling to five different countries this year. What five countries are you going to be headed to? So I'm going to go, uh, well, I'm going to Germany. I have a long layover in, Ger- in Germany on my way to India. So I'm going to, I'm going to be in Delhi, but I have a long layover in, uh, in Germany. So in Frankfurt, so I'm going to get out. So I know that that doesn't do justice to Germany, but for now it's going to probably check a box and say I have been to Germany. And then I'm going to go to India. I'm going to be there for six days. I'm going to do the Golden Triangle. So that's uh, Delhi, uh, Agra, where um, the Taj Mahal is located. Mm. And then Jaipur, which is where um, it's called uh, the Pink City. And uh, and then after India, then I will be going to, to Kathmandu, Nepal. And uh, do the trek there for two weeks. I'm there for two weeks. That's, that's where I'm. I'm the longest during the four week um, adventure. And uh, and so I'm going to base camp. I'm doing. Uh, it's more of a. It's a. It's a highly spiritual um, adventure, especially in Nepal. I'm doing a, a yoga trek. So it's. There's yoga meditation in the morning before the trek begins. Uh, we do we walk for five to eight hours depending on the day. We have a couple of days in between to get acclimated to the elevation. Uh, we fly into the most dangerous airport in the world in uh, Lukla, which is a runway. I like. I think it, anyway. The, it's called the, the most dangerous airport because it's literally like on a cliff i mean you know it's, oh it's, 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 it's very short so only very small planes can get in and you, you know they have to be able to lift otherwise down they go but anyway so it's it's also that that's kind of a cool experience also uh, by itself yeah, for sure. it's a very um it's it's a remote town there are no roads going up to it so the only way you can get to it is by plane so that already starts at 10,000 feet. And then from there, uh, the trek starts. Uh, it's about 10 days uh, with two days of accl- uh, getting acclimated. And the base camp is at 17,500 or something. Dang. So for reference for our listeners, that's that's taller than Mount Adams, isn't it? That's yeah, Mount Hood than... is about 11 something, 11,300. Yeah. 11, You're going to be starting at 10. We're going to be starting at 10, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and Mount Adams, I think, is 12 something, yeah. So, yeah, wow. so... So any any fear concerns? Just what what are you feeling right now? You're like <laughs> you've been training for this, right? So you must feel at least somewhat prepared. You know, I I feel that I've done everything that I that I can that I can do to prepare. I think it's um, you know when you read the description, it's it's you all you, you not only have to be physically. Uh, ready, but you also have to be, you know, emotionally ready, mm. you know, um, or, and so I feel that I am, I mean, I, I, I am in the best 
shape of my life, both uh, physically and mentally. I feel, you know, I, I feel very good and I feel that if, you know, if anything, I, you know, if anything were to happen, it's, you know, it would just be, you know, you know, whatever, but it's not that I didn't give it my best. And I think I I don't have any concerns. I don't have any fear. I know that I'm, you know, I'm f- you know, first of all, I, I'm, I'm doing it with a guide. You can't do this track. You have to get government permission. And so you, you have to go with somebody that knows. And, you know, and, and then these are people that have, you know, that are doing this all the time, you know, is at the Sherpas. And uh, this is what they do. You know, they they have a first aid kid. <laughs> I don't know what they have <laughs> yeah. in their kid. But, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've also done, you know, as a responsible human being, you know, I've also... Um, you know, I have a travel insurance, you know, with a million dollars in case I need to be airlifted, you know, rescued by a helicopter or whatever. So, oh, no. you know, and, 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 repi- and, you know, get back to the U.S. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm prepared, you know, with 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 that is um, I, I I'm just I think when I think about it, it's more um, it's very emotional because it's something that obviously it's it's a big accomplishment and it's 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 not i'm not climbing right i'm not climbing i'm not going over rocks and i'm not going over ice fields uh or ice sheets and but it is it is an endurance you know it's you have to be you have to have the uh, the stamina to go you know to keep going for eight hours a day uh under freezing temperatures i think that they daytime temperatures are probably going to be in the teens and then nighttime temperatures are going to be zero or below. And so uh, we are staying in tea houses, which even though... Tea houses? What's a tea Tea, house? tea houses are more like bed and breakfast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these are like either little villages or like little warming huts that they kind of have along the way. And um, you, ha- I mean, I'll have a bed, but they said that Yes, you're staying in one of the tea houses, but the walls are thin, and you are going to need a sleeping bag as that, that that is rated for zero Fahrenheit, because you know that's the only thing that is gonna keep you warm. So I'm renting a sleeping bag when I get there. I, I feel like I don't, that's that's a lot of bulk to keep. You know, to try to pack a sleeping bag all the way, especially since you, it needs to be rated that you know that low it's a it's a it's a big sleeping bag yeah, that's but like an entire carry-on <laughs> that is an entire carry-on <laughs> and you've got to do several flights yeah um and i and then i have to be in a couple places before i get there so um but yeah i'm you know i'm excited it's it it is definitely you know on the extreme um but i I am I'm, I'm I'm ready and I think mentally also I'm I'm not scared. Um and, and that's kind of a, a big achievement because you know you're going to an un- unknown, you know, country. You, you know what to expect I suppose and but anyway, I'm yeah. I'm I'm excited. Ah, oh, well we're excited for you, definitely. <laughs> um so I'm I'm interested in like what have you done to prepare, like, mentally and emotionally and physically? Can you tell us a little bit about what your training regime has been like? Yeah, so physically, obviously, it's all about endurance. So physically, I've um, I've been active doing yoga for at least, um, I would say, three years now. And I really got into it when I took when I did a retreat uh, to Florida last year in uh, April. And ever since then, I've been pretty much on a daily basis. I have a yoga routine and um, mentally that obviously helps quite a bit. You know, meditation, it's, Mm. you know, there's 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 a lot of that. And I I think for me is how do I know that I'm, you know, mentally ready is is more of um, how much fear do I have? You know, mm. how much anxiety do I have? Is being able to control that anxiety and being able to to look forward to it and not not think about you know what could go wrong, but knowing that everything is gonna be okay. And I think you know, I believe strongly that 
you create your own reality, you know, and your thoughts create your reality. And so if I think that everything, you know, if I, if I believe that everything, everything, you know, always is good, then, you know, it's going to be good, you know, and then, you know, not, 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 not get caught up into, you know, into the worries of other, you know, of other people. Um, and, um, Physically, I've been, the yoga helps, obviously, um, you're exercising your body, but also I've been, you know, I've been hiking for, you know, anywhere between five to, you know, nine miles a day as much as I can. Um, I have, uh, I have this mask that I bought, which is a, <laughs> it's a training mask. And I think uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's called, it's, you know, it's an altitude training mask. And so it's got different, it's got three holes and it's got some clips that you put on that kind of restrict the, the airflow. And, and so depending on the type Sounds of, Sounds claustrophobic. You, <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> it's worse than COVID. Yeah. During the time that, you know, um, but you kind of get used to it. You know, with mm. the first time that I put it on, I put it on at 9,000 feet. That's so I started really high because you can start at 6,000. I put it up at 9,000 feet to setting. And the first time I was like, you know, it's, 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 you do start breathing a little faster because you're trying to catch up. And then, but you know, once you start using it, then you kind of, uh, and I'm assuming that's kind of how it's going to be up there because, you know, you, you have 50%, you know, you know, 50% less oxygen than you do at, you know, closer to sea level. And yeah, so, and here we're only at like 400 feet above sea level or something. Not even that, I think. So. Well, yeah. okay, maybe here it's a little higher, but like, you know, down there is... Well, I live about a 900, so... Mm. And then town is probably 100 or whatever, but yeah. Um, it's And so that, that helps just... And that whole idea is to restrict the airflow, to kind of mimic that, you know, the, the less oxygen that you're going to have up there, but also the... Um, also... It's kind of exercising uh, or um, your 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 breathing muscles, mm. and so that you're so that you can also kind of you know absorb I guess you know more air and thus more oxygen. So yeah, wow, <laughs> it's really fascinating. Um, I love to climb mountains, and so I'm really excited to hear all about this mountain when you come back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and definitely about your your spiritual journey there, too. I mean, Nepal is a place that is very steeped in spiritual culture. Right. Um, so I'm sure that that pilgrimage is going to be really powerful as well. Is there anything you're planning to meditate on while you're there, or what part of your spiritual journey do you foresee this like kind of fulfilling? I think it's it's a continuation of what has been what has been started and it's more about finding balance in life. I think that, you know, not to go to either extreme, uh, which I tend to do very easily, you know, when I when I start working, I can go you know, I, I can work myself out and and then the same thing, you know, with with you know with religion, you know, you can go to the other extreme. And so for me, the, this is a non-religious um, experience, spiritual experience that is really just about um, me and my connection to everything else, you know. And that is what I want to continue on is to continue to to give credit or not so much credit, but to continue to acknowledge that, yes, it may sound selfish, but at the end of the day, if I don't take care of myself, no one else will take care of me. And, and I could, you know, and, and if you don't pay attention to what it's not working out for you, you're going to get into that rabbit hole of depression, anxiety, and, you know, I don't I don't want to be there. You know, I don't I don't want to keep working myself out um, with jobs or with my business. Um, yeah, hitting like a burnout state. Yeah. And, you know, I, I felt that I I was, you know, I, I was definitely on that path. And, and so like because, you know, it's the it's a life of obligation. Right. It's it's sort of what, you know, what the capitalist world that we live in 
you know, now is telling you to do. Like, you got to work, 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 wait until you're 62 or 65 now, and then then you can retire, and then you can do the things, you know, the fun things. And I'm like, no, I don't want to live that. That's not the life that I want to live for, for from now on. You know, I can't change the past, although, I mean, I feel like, you know, it's not that I regret my past, but obviously, like, from now on, you know, is a balance between work and fun because you know the, the fun part is probably the one that I've been lacking for a long time and so that's you know it's almost like a catch-up you know I'm trying to play catch-up and at some point I think I, I will find kind of that balance between like I'm happy you know I'm, I'm I have a happy medium and so mm. that's kind of what I'm you know that happy medium is what I'm trying to to get to yeah it's kind yeah. of what they call in Buddhism like the middle path it's like not going to extremes, but right. walking kind of in the middle. Yeah, yeah. That balance point. Yeah. Well, it's really inspiring to hear you talk about. Um, I'm super excited for you. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Um, before we say goodbye, do you have any words for our listeners, any words of encouragement about um, just living life in general and chasing your dreams? Well, you know, like you said, I think um, it takes courage to get up and do things and um it's very easy to just get deep into your feelings you know you're depressed and so you say i don't want to do anything today i'm just gonna be here sad and i'm just gonna stay there um and if you don't do anything about it, nobody else will, because at the end of the day, as you can hear anybody, you can hear the whole world telling you, you know, that there is hope, there is hope. But you have to be able to do something. You know, if you don't if you don't like your reality, change it. You know, it's like, you know, you have a, t- a TV, you know, a control and change the channel. I believe that you have the power to do so. I mean, I'm I'm living the American dream, you know, I'm I don't think that I would be the only in this country. I don't think that I am. Um, that I am privileged, you know, I am where I am because I've, I, I've, you know, I've made my life this way. So any, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter, you know, what your economic circumstances are right now. I'm not speaking from like, oh, you have money or whatever, you know, I'm not doing the things now because I have the money. I'm doing things because I can and because I had, you know, that, you know, drive and anybody can do it. You know, I, you know, I'm, an immigrant from Guatemala. Um, so that would be, don't, don't, don't stay there, you know, just do something about it to get out to, from, from that, from that point. I believe that we, we decided to come here to this world because we, we saw that there were so many adventures and I think of it like, you know, some, I, I heard this the other day is it's almost like that, you know, those dogs that, you know, you roll down the window in your car and they like to, you know, poke their face out because they like to feel that, you know, mm. that wind in their face and the thrill and it's all about that thrill, you know, it's uh and so living with living a life with intention is is kind of you know where where I'm at. That don't you know don't get cut up. I mean, if you're that kind of person, I guess if it, if it makes you happy to just be a workaholic, I suppose that's your passion, <laughs> right? But you know, for me, you know, it's finding that balance. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your journey with us. Um, we look forward to hearing from you again, perhaps when you come back. Yeah. Oh, the other two countries, by the way, is Thailand and South Korea. So I'm doing six six days in Thailand and then um, back through South Korea and then here. Oh, dang. So maybe a little <laughs> bit of warmer weather for you. <laughs> um, I I think uh, other than than Nepal, everything else is uh, everything else is going to be uh, yeah relatively warm. I suppose yeah. I think India. I feel like anything's Thailand. a little bit relatively more warm than zero degrees. So. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Anywhere else here is warmer than zero degrees. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today with us, Adolfo. Um, we really appreciate you coming on the podcast. For our listeners, uh, find us on Spotify or YouTube or anywhere you get your podcasts. Until next time, this is Cole Goodwin signing off.